Around a quarter of a million children in Britain did vote in Newsround's mock election, and the result made for some interesting comparisons with the general election. In both cases, Labour won around two and a half times as many seats as the Conservatives. The Lib Dems proved even more popular with children. The big difference was in Scotland, where the Scottish Nationalists had a runaway victory in the Newsround election. So what do the children who took part in the mock election think of today's results? The Conservatives have been in power for quite a long time, and so I suppose it's time for a new government. I think the Labour Party have got some new ideas, but nothing radical, and I think the Labour Party will split in, uh, over many issues. But it will be very interesting to see new faces in government. I was really quite shocked that everybody knew that Labour was going to win, but I didn't realise that the Conservative Tories would lose so badly. I did support um, the Liberal Democrats, but I didn't think they would win because um, they, don't have a, they didn't have enough power before. At the next general election, many of those children will be voting for real. At 43 years old, Tony Blair is Britain's youngest Prime Minister for nearly 200 years. He has fought the election campaign on the issues of education, health and strong leadership. Newsround's Nick Gardner reports. Standing outside the most famous front door in Britain, Catherine, Nicholas and Ewan Blair. The election result means that number 10 will now be their home for the next five years. And it wasn't long before they got their first glimpse inside the historic building. With such a huge majority in Parliament, Mr Blair will now be able to put through the Commons any of the issues he's campaigned on. Over the past six weeks, the Labour Party leader has highlighted what he sees as a need for improvements in Britain's education system. And as he pointed out when interviewed by the Newsround election press pack team, that could involve more homework for children. You know, I, I mean, I remember from my own experience, homework is not the most popular thing, but it is absolutely essential. I passionately believe that unless this country upgrades its edu the education of its children, we will never succeed in the future. It's absolutely essential, and I'm afraid that does mean that people are going to have to work hard at it. What do, you th what do your sons think of your um, homework policy? Well, let's say it's one of the less popular aspects of the programme. <laughs> Mr Blair said today that after 18 years in opposition, Labour now had a chance to put their policies into practice. He promised he would build a Britain that would work together, making opportunities for all rather than just a few. There is no doubt that the events of the last 24 hours will go down in history. But we're celebrating another historical event too. It's Newsround's birthday and we've made a special programme to mark it. 25 years ago, Newsround was born. We'll be looking back at the stories we've covered, starting with our first presenter, John Craven. It hasn't been a mania like this since the days of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, and that was getting on for 10 years ago. New frontiers in space, battles to save endangered animals, and 25 years of pop stars. Join us on Monday, quarter to five on BBC One for Newsround's Rock and Roll Years. Well, that's all from Newsround on this historic and hectic day. Have a great bank holiday weekend. Bye-bye. It's a big hit. It'll knock you out. Uh -huh. It's got fab music, fun comedy. My name's Father Barry Kissinger. And great cartoon. Somebody stop me! And this Sunday, it's got Gary Barlow. Make sure you're tuned in to see this Sunday's fully book. Sunday morning, 9.30 on Children's BBC Two. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fully booked on Sunday, and remember tomorrow from half past seven, Kirsten and Otis will be here with the Saturday Aardvark. Kirsten will be here to tell you more this afternoon after today's Blue Peter. Let go. On Friday's Blue Peter, we recreate the last invasion of Britain 200 years ago. The breathtaking Gandini jugglers will be demonstrating their amazing skills. 
and we boldly go where no one has been before, the Virtual Space Station. Hi there, well the Blue Peter Garden Sundial says it's sunny and of course it is because it's May, it's a time of renewal, it's a time, watch it Mabel, it's a time of frolicking lambs, of fresh sprouting flowers, of course it's a time of general elections but it's also a time of great British traditions and Mabel is enjoying today's maypole dancing, not even the festivities at number 10 Downing Street today can match Donna Maria's international maypole spectacular here in the Blue Peter Garden. No, they can't. Now, it may be May the 2nd, but to these girls, every single day of the year is May Day. Now, they've been to every corner of England taking a slice of Merry England with them. And very soon, they're going to be performing in front of the Queen. Now, apparently, it's all down to the plaiting. Now, Mabel, behave. Um, now keep your eye on the pole, watch this. If you watch the plaiting carefully, you should be able to experience some very good maypole dancing. So, take it away, girls. A maypole like this is the centerpiece of traditional May Day festivities, according to my book of ye old customs. Before these were invented, people danced around a hawthorn tree to celebrate the new growth and fertility at the height of spring. As well as dancing, many young people used to go out to the woods before dawn and, and blow cow horns to each other. So I'm going to swap my book now uh, for a cow horn. I'll just keep it here. Here we go. Well, they obviously didn't uh, blow this particular cow horn. Let's get rid of that. Um, now, they also they go around and collect flowers and tree branches to decorate their village with. Uh, but thankfully, most of those strange customs have gone. They've been forgotten about. But there is one that deserves a mention, and it's from Gloucestershire. And it involves a great big double Gloucester cheese. And here it is. Now, what they do, believe it or not, they would take a great big cheese like this, and they'd adorn it with fresh flowers in front of these maple dancers. They put it all 